here's another interesting thing. I just did some data work, but I didn't get to do a slide. This is cool. South Africa. Let's say you want to give people ARVs. Let's say we have a decision rule. South Africa, like most countries, is broken up into medical districts. So let's say we have uh, people on HIV AIDS. Districts with high distributions, people with low distributions. Then let's look at the income in those districts. OK. Now, if you're a medical officer, where should money go? Where should money go? If you're a medical officer distributing ARVs with a public program, where should you put? Upper right quadrant. Right? High levels of AIDS, low incomes. That's where the public purse should be spent. Where is it spent in South Africa? So the treatment action campaign works, but the treatment action campaign is basically a bunch of rich white guys on HIV AIDS. This is where the money's going in South Africa for AIDS treatment. That's why political economy models, you know, they're not for nothing. They're not for nothing. So where do we go from here? I would suggest uh, the following hypotheses about global civil society. First, the gap between the supply and demand of public goods. The smaller that gap is, the more effective global society, civil society is going to be. So global civil society is very effective in this ARV campaign. It hasn't been very effective with respect to the Millennium Development Goals. Okay? We're very far from any of the Millennium Development Goal targets. But those are big targets. Okay. Alignment. The greater the ability of global civil society to align the interests of the rich nation selectorate with those of the world's most vulnerable people, the greater its effectiveness. Again, I think HIV AIDS is a nice case versus like halting the slave trade, which I've worked on, which can't get people interested in here in the industrial world. And I think that's what my friend meant when he wrote me that email about, Ethan, why are you wasting your time on the slave trade? That's what he meant. He didn't mean, you know, he didn't mean that you know, Jerry Cohn as an IP scholar isn't going to get excited about the work. I think what he meant was maybe this. Again, the problem with cryptic emails. And then this mobilization hypothesis. Perhaps the greater your capacity to graft on to local NGOs, the greater its potential effectiveness. And uh, a bunch of people have actually found similar things, like Sundstrom um, found this in Russia with, with respect to democracy promotion. It's one of the weaknesses of democracy promotion assistance. No one to graft on to within Russia. Um, uh, Acharya found this with respect to regional integration in Asia, you know, where uh, you have, for example, now the United States trying to promote greater regional integration in Asia, but who do you graft onto in those countries who are going to support this stuff? So three kind of hypotheses that we might look at. And just some final thoughts. Uh, global civil society plays a crucial role in seizing upon government and market failures. They are so smart about seizing upon these government and market failures. But we still know very little about its political strategies and how it gains influence. And there, the case study work is invaluable. We really have very few good uh, case studies of how these police, uh, people often work. And maybe, uh, Rich, it's something to think about as you send your students into the field to work with these organizations. Maybe to kind of give projects like, what are the political strategies of these groups? And get a real database going on this stuff. That might be really exciting, because we don't have much case study evidence. And there's I think a lot of methodological problems with the constructivist approach to this. Uh, GCF is often in conflict with the target governments over policy. We still know relatively little about how you would shape, you know, and this is a classic problem in IR, in international relations. How do we shape interventions in foreign governments? Should we? That's a normative question. Uh, GCS is involved in lots of causes, but with varying degrees of success, and we still don't really know a lot about why some campaigns are more effective. So I think. This really does merit a real interdisciplinary, serious interdisciplinary research program, which brings together different theoretical and methodological approaches. And all I'll try to do today is, you know, suggest that the pro you know political economy has something to contribute to this area. You know, we shouldn't just cede the terrain to the constructivists and to the normative theorists. That positive political economy actually does have a role to contribute as well. Thank you. <laughs>